Hey, it's Trip here from the 87th. This video is about locating air to air targets using bullseye callouts in BMS 4.33, update 1. It's uh, the second part of uh, two parts. Uh, this part is more of my thoughts on the technique that I use for locating airborne targets. And so, my first consideration. Uh, when I'm given a bullseye location for a target, especially if it's from my wingman. If I can see my wingman on the HSD, uh, for instance, if this is my number three wingman and he calls a uh, bullseye at 120 for 50, well, I know if he's looking in this direction, there's no way that I'm ever going to be able to move my cursor around here to the 150 to 20 position looking at these. Uh, reference numbers. It's not going to happen. So my first instinct is I need to turn my aircraft to approximately parallel his heading. And then I can start looking in the same direction he's looking. Now when I get turned around there, it very may, may well be that I see uh, his locked aircraft on the uh, FCR if I range out far enough. And that's good. So problem solved. Uh, but the problem comes when uh, this bullseye call is given to me by magic or maybe it's given to me by another aircraft in this uh, big alpha package that we're flying. We had 10 or 12, 15 airplanes and I can't get everybody in the IDM uh, on the data link so I'm not going to see them uh, on the HSD especially if they're not in my package. So if I get a call from another aircraft in the theater, a bullseye call, uh, then I need to use this uh, technique that I talked about in uh, part one. But the more I thought about it, uh, I got to thinking that there's an easier way to do this. In part one, I said, well, I take a look at my heading. Right now we're heading 350. So I take that and I use a, a vertical line out of the center of bullseye, and that's 350. And then from 350, I can figure out where 120 is. Well, an easier way to do it is to just look at the compass and find 120. Here's 120. So it looks like it's at about my 4 or 5 o'clock position. Um, if this is 12 o'clock, regardless of what my heading is, if this is 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 and 9, then if I take this 4 o'clock position, 4 or 5 o'clock position, and I come up here to bullseye, and I uh, imagine a line coming out here that's 4 or 5, uh, four or five o'clock, if this is 12 o'clock again and 6 o'clock down here, then here's the radial of the called target. So I need to look along this radial somehow. Well, I know that if I'm looking in this direction, there's no way I'm going to get my cursor over to that uh, called position. So the first thing I need to do is turn the airplane over in this direction somehow. But uh, to get it a little bit more accurate, if the bullseye call was 120 at 50, well, if I'm at 45 from me to bullseye, this distance here, well, 50 is going to be right about out in here someplace along this 120 degree radial. So I need to look in this spot right here. That's where I want to turn to. So if I take a line from there to my airplane, then if I look at this line and then transpose it down here, it looks like it's going to be about 110 you know, something about 110, maybe 105, something like that. So that's the heading that I'm going to turn to. And so now I can get my radar coverage in this area and look for the called traffic. So that seems to be a lot easier technique. Let's do another one. Let's say uh, the, we're tooling along in this direction and the call is uh, bullseye 300 for 20. Well, that's cool. Here's 300 right here. It's about the 10 o'clock position. I come out of bullseye at the 10 o'clock position, and it's along this line someplace. All right, I don't know quite where, but I'm already generally looking in that direction. If I am at uh, 45 here, then 30 is going to be right about here. So if I just open up my azimuth uh, a little bit, I'm probably going to find the guy sitting right over here someplace. He's going to show up on the radar if I have the uh, elevation of the call traffic uh, 
uh, set here and if I have the range it looks like about 80 miles maybe even 60 miles but 80 miles will work I'll probably see him in this area someplace so it seems to me like that's a really good technique um, just correlate the radial that you're given take it off the compass card and transpose it up to the bullseye uh, target you can do that just with your eyeballs you don't have to uh, touch any mouse or uh, any uh, buttons or anything other than ranging in and out to make sure you can see the bullseye target on the HSD. So I like that technique. Um, just give you one more. Let's say a, a more difficult one is let's say the bullseye call is uh, 250 for 30 miles. Uh, let's make it 250 for 60 miles. All right, so I come down here to 250. So that's about the almost the nine o'clock position. So I come up to bullseye and almost 9 o'clock. Well, that's about where I am right here. Okay, so looking in this direction, I'm probably not going to see him. He's at 60 miles. I'm at 45. That means he's out here someplace along this 250-degree radial. So I need to turn left. So I need to turn to a heading uh, from my airplane in this direction about 8 o'clock. So I look down here to 8 o'clock, and it's about maybe 220 or so. So I'm going to honk around to 220 and get my radar range uh, down to about 40 miles and look for that target. Now you notice uh, that I have the radar range and the uh, range on the MFD decoupled with this OSB2. It's very annoying if I was to couple this and I put my radar range down to 20 miles over here on the FCR, then I lose my bullseye. Uh, indication. I really don't care for that uh, to happen. I like to keep that uh, displayed here. So I uncouple the radar range from the HSD range. So now no matter what I do with the range on the radar, I'm still going to have my bullseye indication displayed here. Alrighty. Um, now you might say, well why not just use the bullseye symbology that's on the radar? Well, if I range out all the way to 160 miles, that's as far as I can go on the radar, I still don't have that bullseye displayed. If I was to turn to the right, yes, I would have it displayed. Um, but let me show you why that's not going to work. And let's go ahead and turn the airplane until we can see the bullseye. There it comes. All right, I'm going to roll out right here. Okay. Now, uh, in part one, I said that uh, I could take my heading here, it's uh, 010, and I could uh, take a vertical line out of here. If I put the cursor over 010, or over the top of the uh, bullseye, rather, it's going to say about 010 here, but look, it's nowhere near the top of the bullseye indication over on the FCR. As a matter of fact, if I put the cursor over the top of the uh, bullseye, it's reading 052, which is not uh, quite uh, 010, so it's quite a, a bit uh, off. Now, the only time that it's going to be the same as the HSD is if the bullseye is centered right in the middle of the FCR. And the reason these are different is that this HSD is just a display of uh, uh, symbols overlaying on a like a Cartesian coordinate system where you have a series of vertical lines and horizontal lines that are at 90 degrees to each other. That's not the case with the uh, radar. With this B-scope, uh, it's focused on the bottom center of the display. So all the radar energy that's being emitted you know, goes out in, in different directions. Of course, here it's going out straight in front of the airplane. And... Uh, so it's, uh, it's, this, it's just offset a little bit. It's uh, not going to be accurate uh, with respect to what we're doing here. So that's the reason uh, that you can't just use the display on the FCR, the bullseye display, uh, to find these uh, radials that we talked about. All right, so that is what I wanted to say about that. Uh, another thing that I find uh, not confusing but people ask about is this uh, indication down here of my current bullseye position. This little uh, triangle on the 
uh, outer edge of this circle here is pointing to bullseye. It's my my relative uh, heading to take me to the bullseye position. Well, if I take a line here and I go straight out this way, it looks like it misses it a little bit to the bottom side of the bullseye. Well, it's not pointing to bullseye from this position. It's pointing. It's telling me if I turn, and it looks like about 70 degrees or so. If I turn from my present heading 70 or 80 degrees or so, that'll point at bullseye. So what I have to do is transpose this little symbol onto the uh, over to the top of my airplane, and then that way it'll give me an accurate relative bearing to bullseye. The distance will be uh, correct, but uh, uh, yeah, the distance will be correct. Is that right? It's oh yeah, it's a 252 radio for 36 miles, so that's 36 miles, and I'm on about the 252 because if I come down here, I can see that there's the 252, and that's about the same uh, orientation as I have here. All right, talked about decoupling and about the uh, difference in the B scope and the fact that you can't use the uh, bullseye symbol on the FCR for this technique that I'm uh, doing. And I think that's uh, the additional uh, comments that I wanted to make about that. I hope it helps and trip out.